Hey, it's Devin again with 918 Software. 918 Software is a company that builds enterprise applications, web applications, mobile applications, but I'm also interested in machine learning. And so uh, as I'm learning a little bit about this, I'm sharing as I go in this little video series that I'm calling Learn As I Learn. Um, even though I claim that the series was kind of wrapped up with the last video, I had to try a few other things. And so now I must share my observations. And I'm just going to kind of jump through to the heart of the matter. Um, this time around, I wanted to to, uh, to try training using the MFCCs, the Mel Frequency Substrum, which is extracted from the uh, extracted from the audio clips that we we have, and it's a uh, it's a way to actually, if you want to read up on it, here here's how the MFCCs are derived. You're just going to have to Google it because I'm not going to get into that conversation right now. However, what you'll end up with is typically um, an array of 20 numbers that represent the frequency span instead of a much larger array of numbers representing the spectrogram, uh, which is what I did last time around. So I'm like, okay, so a smaller feature set that should be help us improve on training. It's also a one-dimensional uh, training set. And I found by observing some other machine practitioners uh, work online that um, it's also beneficial to take the mean to reduce the data size even more. So let's let me just jump through here to give you an example. Um, after extracting the MFCCs, uh, and there's just a Librosa function called, so it's easy enough for you to figure that out if you want to go back and look at that. Um, after pulling that out, I'm grabbing the mean off of each uh, each result, off of each MFCC feature. And so here, before I take the mean, you can see this is the data graphed. This is a particular sample. This represents sound from one particular data file. And uh, again, we're not looking at a spectrogram. We're looking at um, another kind of byproduct called the MFCC. Okay. Um, as you can see, it looks very densely graphed. So like for each, uh, if we look at the, the shape of the array, well, I don't think I have it before, but the shape is something like I get a 20 by 173 array. And I take for each of these 20, instead of taking the entire 173 uh, uh, numbers, which you see it would be graphed here from like here to here it would be 173 numbers then in the next time slice it would be 173 i just take the mean and what you'll see is that what you end up with is the same essential shape which is what we need to learn with but without all of the extra chunky data right so this is actually a great improvement what i end up with is just uh, i'm training on 20 features so i go through all the same steps i split up my validation data um I, instead of um Instead of kind of uh, standardizing between zero and one the way I was manually, before just doing a little bit of math and reshaping the array, uh, I found the standard scalar, which I'm using now instead um, to basically normalize. And so here's an, a, a version before being standardized, a negative 120 to 40, and then here's one that's uh, you know negative four to one. So it's it's closer to the zero axis. Everything kind of compressed up. It's a bit. It's a bit strange how it scales. It looks like the shape is somewhat different compared to the way I would expect it to be rendered here. But I'm not worrying about that too much because it works, trust me. Okay, moving on, uh, I'm back to a uh, fully connected dense layer model. So it's just a sequential model with three dense layers. Um, the same optimizer as before, nothing really new is different other than I'm basically, um, I said this is Urban Sound 7 with MFCC, but I've dropped, I've dropped the uh, CNN no longer a convolutional neural network okay so because i it's a because there's it's not a multi-dimensional so unlike a spectrogram we're, we're kind of now doing analysis on a line or on a graph of lines like we we saw above instead of something that represents more of a picture which that's when cnns are appropriate um so the first thing that i noticed whenever running through it took me a lot more epics to get a, a decent result but it runs really fast, right? Because I have so so many fewer features. I really appreciate the fact that it didn't take me as long to get there. And my accuracy is is a uh, score is, is fairly high. Here I come out with 92%. So that's like four points of uh, uh, an improvement over my last approach with CNN. Uh, so I was pretty happy about that. However, what I find is that you really have to get into the overfitting, right? So I can look here. I tweaked my parameters several times, I ended up bringing in a regularizer, which is one approach for trying to, if you don't have additional um, 
training data, which I don't, I have a fixed amount set. There's a couple of other things, parameters that you can tweak. And one of them is these regularizers. And I just tried, experimented with a few until I found the best possible result. And I ended up with a, a pretty, this, this graph represents the training loss versus the validation loss. And so the blue line is whenever you're starting to overfit. When you're dramatically overfitting, you'll see it up here. You can use, uh, and obviously the closer this is to the red line, the uh, the less that you're that you're overfitting. And so this turned out to be kind of a reasonable amount. Um, I apply the same approach uh, and I print out, oh, this is, this is, I got to come up, we got to talk about that in a minute. So here's the results from the CNN approach I did in my last notebook. They were pretty, pretty accurate. The only was that there was a couple of questions that right in here, was this a jackhammer or was it like a drill? Um, this one, 4727, it says it's street music. It's a really weird, just kind of noise on the street. Nothing really pops out. So I haven't seen any prediction that really seems to get that one right. But also it's, it's difficult to my ear. So it's, it's not something that uh, I can even tell what it is either. So I wouldn't expect that the model would do any better than I would as a human. So here I've printed out the same results. And the, even though I'm getting a score of uh, 92%, like I said, that feels pretty good. Um, these results are all perfect, except for actually this one here, where we thought the 4727, which we've never gotten right now, it thinks it's a jackhammer. And over here on the uh, this 3957, it believes it's a siren. Oh, by the way, this is what it sounds like. It's not even close to being a siren. So. Again, even though my score looked like it's good, and I could have posted this online and said, hey, look, I've got 92% or 93%. That's pretty great. Um, I feel like I was actually getting better results that were more sensible um, whenever I was working with CNN. Now, this isn't this is another version I have without CNN. I won't go back, but just to revisit, whenever I was using spectrograms and CNN, whenever I would take out the individual samples. Uh, for my test files, the ones that don't have labels, and I would manually listen to them and go, what is that? My model was actually predicting either correctly, um, it, was, it was predicting correctly, or if it was a very difficult to discern sound, it might get it wrong. In some cases, less than 10% of the cases. But what it didn't do is have a lot of weird false positives. And I'm, I'm getting some weird false positives with this approach. So even though it's training faster, uh, and it's the generally accepted solution, I had some 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 changes. Now I can actually tweak these parameters up here to where I do, uh, I think fewer epics. Uh, I can't remember what all parameters I was tweaking. Removing the regular regularizers and I can t get my score down to where it's reasonable and not giving me false positives. However, then my accuracy is only around 88, 89, 90%. So I lose a couple of like a, a couple of points according to the accuracy score, but it becomes more of a realistic model. So what does that mean? That means if I'm around 88, 89, 90%, then really I'm having the same result that I was getting, even though it's a different kind of model and it's a different approach, I'm getting the same approximate result that I was getting with the uh, CNN model and spectrograms. So I said, okay, well, maybe if I take some of the things that I learned here and I apply it back to the spectrogram, let's go ahead and run spectrogram. Generate spectrograms, and here I'm. I, I thought I would try to take the mean of the features. So you get a lot of. So here, whenever I run through it, I load my saved results. I've got five thousand four hundred twenty-eight samples, and uh, each of them are ten twenty-five by one seventy-three. So I did the same approach by taking the mean, so I could reduce this data set from being uh, whatever this is ten twenty-five by one seventy-three to just you know, 1025 features, right? And so again, if I graph it before, graphing it before I take the mean, I get this big chunky shape, right? Uh, each little slice is uh, 173, I believe, yeah, 173 units wide, tall, long, I don't know, whatever you want to use. But when I take the mean, I get this uh, dis discernible shape. And I think, well, is that going to be good enough? I mean, it's, I mean, what I'm throwing away so much information here. But I, again, training time works uh, better, it's faster. And I, I use the same approach, standard scalar. And again, instead of using CNN, because that wouldn't make sense, because this is not multidimensional data, um, it's just an input shape of 1025, still quite a bit wider than I have over on the, um, the MFCC approach. So I've got 
basically a, a 1025 wide input shape. Um, I use the regulator, or sorry, regularizer again, um, the same type of approach. I fit the model, I get the results, and look at, lo and behold, 86%. So still in the ballpark, you know, um, I don't know if I actually ran this down here. I think I did, actually. I was looking at my... Um, My overfitting is still kind of extreme. If I actually ran this cell, I don't want to rerun it here since we're I'm recording this live. But when I look at my predictions, I actually get the same goofy predictions here that I got whenever I was working with the MFCC. This this false positive of a siren here on 3957. And again, if I tweak my parameters, if I actually remove my um, regularizer and run it, I'll, I'll get back to very reasonable results, but again, about 88%. So all of that to say, I've sliced and diced this three different ways, and I'm still seeming to get about the same result using different models and different approaches. So anyway, that's what I've learned today. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll continue. Even though I promised that the series was over, I guess I'll just keep working on it as long as I have the energy and time, all right? Because I, I really want to try to push this up uh, well above 92%. And, and and the reliable 88% that I'm getting right now. Okay, that's it. Goodbye, folks. See you next time.